Now, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about the adult mayfly, in particular the dun, when we tied the sulfur. Today, I want to talk about the next step in a mayfly life cycle. I'm talking about spinners. And even if you're new to fly fishing, you might have heard this term. So, what exactly is a spinner? Well, it's a spent mayfly. So what do we mean by spent? Well, recall this picture. A mayfly starts out as a nymph, it emerges and hatches into an adult, flies around looking for a mate, has some bug sex, and then the female goes and lays her eggs in the water. And after that, it's pretty much used all its life energy and falls back dead to the water. So you might hear these called a spinner fall. Now, a mayfly hatch can happen anywhere in the river. It could be faster water, even in riffles, pretty much anywhere the nymphs live. But when the females go back to lay their eggs, usually they do it in slower water. So a lot of spinner falls happen in slower, smoother water. And these spent bugs are really hard for us fishermen to see because they sit well down into the surface film. And a lot of spinner falls happen in the late afternoon or early evening when it's pretty hard for us to see anyway. But if you ever see rises happening in smoother water in the early evening and you don't see any bugs on the surface, well, they could be feeding on spinners. Now, there are a lot of ways to tie spent wings. You can use some kind of synthetic or polypropylene yarn. You can do wally wings, which Tom asked me if I could do that, so I'll do a wally wing fly here pretty soon. But first, I wanted to show you this method, which I think is one of the easiest ways to tie spent wings. And the one I'm about to show you, it's really just a generic mayfly. It's called a hen spinner. I got it from Dick Stewart's Universal Fly Tying Guide. But you'd really want to tie this in whatever color the mayflies are that are hatching in the water you're fishing at that time of year. Or you could tie it with this gray body and light colored wings, which match an awful lot of the mayflies out there. Now do keep in mind that fishing spinners can be a little bit challenging because they do have a tendency to twist up your leader. And for that reason, you might want to fish them in pretty close and try to minimize your false casting. But overall, they're not that hard to tie and it's definitely worth having a few of these in your box. Let's give this one a shot. So there's one in the vise, what is officially called a hen spinner, but it's just a generic mayfly spinner tied with hen feather tips for a wing. And tie this on whatever size you're tying the mayflies you're trying to imitate. This is a size 14, standard length dry fly hook. Let's get that in there a little straighter, okay. And I'm gonna use some dun colored thread. This is actually a, a brown and gray, but close enough. So let's take it down to where the barb would have been. Now we're gonna to wanna to put a little bump here before we tie in the tail. And you could do this with thread, just put, you know, 30 thread wraps there, but it's a little quicker. I think a little easier to put just the slightest bit of dubbing right here. A noodle, not even an inch long, and I might even have more than I need right here, but we'll see what this does for us. Okay, that's a little bit bigger of a bump than I want, but we're gonna make it work. So take two, these things are called micro fivots which basically looks like a paintbrush. It's kind of a synthetic material, mayfly done tailing material, but just grab two of these. Actually, I have seen people use paintbrush fibers for these tails. So take two of them, get the tips aligned, and we're gonna get it about a body length. It's a pretty long tail. So let's catch it in right here. Little pinch wrap right there. And don't worry if they flare up on you. We'll take care of that in just a second. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and some loose wraps just to bury this right here so it will keep it from spinning around the hook on me through the rest of the fly. So get your thread right back here where we caught in these micro fibbits. That's fun to say. And either take your bodkin or if you can split them up with your fingers, just grab them and pull them apart. Maybe you can get a, 90, a 45 degree angle out of them, but you're going to want to put some X wraps, at least one, you know, in between them. A little figure eight wrap right here. So there's the, the split we want, but I don't want them really sticking up. So I'm going to pull them down just a little bit. Take a couple extra wraps right here. And now they're coming off the back of the hook a little bit more like I want. Okay, now let's dub the body. Put a little bit more wax on and some of that same dubbing. We're going to take it up at least two thirds up.
Okay, just dub this up and you don't want to go too far or you'll start crowding your eye after you've done your wings. So that's really about as far up as I want to go. Now for the wings, just some hen feathers and some, some of the really small feathers. You can go ahead and strip off all the barbs till you get it to the size you want, but I think that's a little harder and they end up spinning all around on you. So what I've been doing, I just take two hen feathers and I don't trim them to size yet, but where my thread is, that's where I want them to be sticking out. I'm gonna lay them on top right here and then catch them in with just a couple of loose wraps at first and then make sure they're coming off the, the front, off the top. Now I can put some tighter wraps going back here. Okay, and they're still coming off the front, so I'm, I'm fine with that. But we do have a big mess right here. And how I'm doing it here, it's a lot easier, but it's a little messier. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. It doesn't look too messy yet, but it's about to, because we're gonna split these up and then do some figure eight X wraps in between them to get them coming off the hook perpendicular. And we're gonna end up with a bunch of those fibers sticking forward that we're gonna to have to trim. But that's okay, I think it's a good trade off because it does make this fly a good bit easier to tie. So I'm just doing some X wraps, figure eight wraps right in between these until you know I get them coming off perpendicular like I want but I have all this right here I've got to contend with. And that's really why you don't want to get too close to your eye because it'll start, you know, might clog up the eye. But go ahead and trim these right now. Okay, so I've got the wings pretty much where I want, but it's a little messy up there in the head, but we'll be fine. So let's go ahead and put a little bit more wax on our thread and then a little bit more of the same dubbing for the thorax. And now let's dub this right behind these wings and even do a, another X wrap or figure eight up through here. So I like those wings okay. Now this might be the, the trickiest part, is getting your whip finish up here behind the eye in front of those wings, but we can do it. You just have to zigzag it a little bit through here and try not to get your wings out of line. So there we go. Not the prettiest fly in the world, but you've definitely got those spent wings and what the fish is gonna see is that right there. So it's a not a terribly difficult pattern, but it does take a little bit of practice. I could certainly use a little bit more practice. But that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.